Public service announcement to my friends. Who does this top belong to? <laughs> Speak now or forever hold your peace because I found it downstairs at the studio and I thought, hey, and clearly now I'm wearing it. <laughs> We're back with another three looks, one palette video. And today's contender is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. Now I'm aware that this isn't brand new, uh, but it seems to me that it's still one of the most talked about eyeshadow palettes. It's still very relevant. I tried to create three very different eyeshadow looks, right? So um, different placements and different color schemes. And I think I did a pretty good job, if I may say so myself. Now, before we get onto the tutorials, let me just give you guys a quick blurb of my thoughts on this palette. I enjoy the modern Renaissance, right? But it's not my favorite because it just leans so warm. It's not as versatile as a lot of my other palettes. I did manage to create one cooler tone look, um, which you'll see in the tutorials to come, but it felt like a stretch. It felt like I was really trying. If you exclusively wear warm eyeshadow, then that's going to be a non-issue for you, right? But if you are like me and you like a mix of warm and cool tones, I think you might find this color combo to be a little bit limiting. In terms of the formula, um, I had seen reviews of this palette, so I went in expecting them to be quite powdery and I was still taken aback by how much damn powder these shadows kick up. Definitely more than any of the other eyeshadow palettes that I own, um, more than the Anastasia Beverly Hills singles, which are really good. I recommend those actually. In terms of blendability, I, I did find that the shadows blended pretty well. These two reddened shades required a little bit more work. They could be patchy if you weren't careful. And my favorite shade of the entire palette, without a doubt, is this dark brown, Cypress Umber. This is like the backbone of the three tutorials to come, I feel. It's really rich and, and dense and beautiful love. So all in all, I like this eyeshadow palette. It's a nice eyeshadow palette. Um, and I'll continue to use it. But if it were to like mysteriously vanish tomorrow, would I repurchase it? Probably not. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys found that little review helpful and onto the tutorials. So I always prime my eyes in pretty much the same way. Um, so I'm gonna show it once, but FYI, this is a constant throughout the three looks. So I use a little bit of the MAC 24 hour extend eye base, kind of onto the lid and a bit into the crease area. This is quite a grippy eyeshadow primer and it really helps the eyeshadows adhere to the skin. I then add a little bit of the Tarte Shape Tape under the brow uh, and blend downwards just to kind of knock back any uh, veins and redness that I happen to have in that area. And finally, just a little dusting of some translucent powder through the socket uh, just to make blending a little easier, make my life a bit easier. And now we have the perfect canvas for eyeshadow. Look number one is Spotlight and Space Buns. <laughs> so this one's got real 90s vibes uh, and the color scheme utilizes some of the pinky reds in the palette. So we're gonna take Golden Ochre above the crease as a bit of a transition shade. This shade, it kind of disappointed me because I love, I love a good strong ochre tone, but this one just kind of looks a bit like nothing on my skin. Then taking Burnt Orange, don't know if I describe this one as an orange, it's kind of a warm mid-tone. And we're deepening the outer and inner half of the eye to start to establish that spotlight placement. Love Letter is one of the more interesting shades in this palette. I'd kind of describe it as like a raspberry or Brighton burgundy, maybe. And I incorporated this shade by dusting it on the outer and inner lid and then bringing it up into that crease color. P.S. I often um, leave myself little visual clues in my footage to help me remember how things performed, right? And this, <laughs> this is how Love Letter performed. Great color, I just couldn't really get a seamless blend. I wanted this spotlight placement to have a uh, like stronger contrast. So I dabbed a, a darker shade in, again, the deepest part of the inner and outer eye. Next, dabbing a little bit of the Tarte Shape Tape on the ball of the eyelid. This uh, acts as a base for the highlight, and again, it just helps to amp up the overall contrast of the eye. Then pressing uh, a warm shimmer, Primavera, over the Shape Tape. And the shimmers in this palette, they're pretty enough, yeah? Uh, they're not crazy high shine foil shimmers uh, like you'd get from, say, Natasha Denona. Just FYI. For the lower lash line, we're pushing Cypress Umber close to the lashes. This is a fabulous, dark, truly neutral brown, and it will help to separate all those red and pinky tones from the whites of the eyes so that you don't get that kind of sick look, right? 
and buffing out with red ochre yet again, back and forth, back and forth, creating a moderately heavy lower lash line here, just enough to balance all the drama going on on top. Finish the eyeshadow off by dipping back into your transition shade and sweeping around the entire perimeter of the eye. Um, just to soften any edges and this is a technique that I often use as a last step to make an eyeshadow look more profesh. As always you don't have to use lashes but lashes make me happy so I shall use them. I'm going to go with the House of Lashes Siren which are quite lightweight but very piecey and they add a really cool texture to this look. Now for lips, I'm going to show you two options right? If you really want to go 90s then Deep Vamp Fall Show. The Winky Lux uh, liquid lipstick in Whoopie Pie. <laughs> this color is everything my heart desires. I was so elated, but it swiftly turned into dismay because, oh lordy, I have honestly never met a liquid lipstick that is so uncomfortable. I am sorry, Winky Lux. I really wanted this to work so bad, but I genuinely could not stand to keep it on my lips for another moment. It felt like dry cement. So instead, let's try a nude. The uh, Bare Minerals Gen Nude Liquid Lipstick Formula, amazing, so comfortable. They don't dry down entirely, and there is a nude for legitimately every possible skin tone imaginable. Much recommend. On to look number two, the cool toned eye. And ironically, my personal favorite of the three looks. I buy a warm tone eyeshadow palette, and then I love the cool tone creation. What can I say? Taking the matte shade Bon Fresco, uh, sort of a muted lavender, and really taking my time here to carve and shade the entire socket from the inner to the outer corner and really blending it up towards the brow. And then keeping with those cooler tones, I opted for Vermeer, which is kind of a slightly um, a pinky shimmer. And I took that over much of the mobile lid and then whatever was left on the brush, I dusted under the brow. I did also want to test how these shimmers would perform if applied slightly damp. So I misted my brush with a setting spray and again applied Vermeer just to the very ball of the eyelid. You know, no surprises, I was pleased with how it performed. You know, it's a really great shine and the pigment remained very smooth. The Dark Cypress Umber. This is absolutely the star of this look. I used it to create a little bit more depth in the outer V, which you can see here. And then I also used it with an angled brush. Uh, to line the lash line for a sort of a soft liner effect. In fact, I was having so much fun <laughs> with this seemingly boring brown eyeshadow that I went crazy on the lower lash line. Um, and this is an eyeshadow placement that I have been absolutely loving recently and it's kind of tri tricky to describe, but I create a, a very heavy lower lash line, particularly at just at the very outer edge, really bringing that shadow much lower than you would normally. Uh, and I do imagine on some eye shapes that this could translate to a little bit of a sad eye, like a sad expression, but it's a fun statement and you should totally experiment with it. Back to Bon Fresco to soften the edge on that lower lash line, but also taking it around the entire perimeter of the eye, you know, good finishing touch. And finally, as an inner corner highlight, I'm taking Vermeer and bringing that onto the inner third of the lower lash line as well. So it's not all very, very dark and closed off. And hey, I just realized that this look only used three eyeshadows. I think that's pretty cool. This placement does interesting things to the shape of the eye, right? And I maintain that it's a cool look, but let me show you how lashes can create more balance, so to speak. I use the Kiss Clusters, love these. Oh, if you haven't tried these, you should. They offer a similar effect to individuals, but they're much quicker and much easier to apply. And I focused on creating a lot of volume at the, and a lot of volume and bulk almost at the outer corner. And now the eyes appear quite elongated and almost like cat eye, uh, as opposed to downturn. I think it's fascinating. I'm makeup obsessed, clearly. This lipstick was the perfect pairing, if I may say so myself. This is Tarte Salt Life which is a nude mauve that leans grayish. It's definitely got some sort of desaturated thing going on. And uh, FYI, this does look more gray on most people, but my lips tend to saturate everything. So, you know, I freaking love how this look turned out. And when I wore this in my 2017 uh, Beauty Favorites video, I had so many requests. So here you go. Third and final look. I'm gonna call this one grunge glam. It definitely has grunge vibes to me, but if you are a grunge purist, please don't hurt me. We can call it like an orange smoky eye instead. Starting with golden ochre again, I wasn't ready to give up on this shade, and I really wanted to see if I could build it up, but I couldn't. Golden ochre, you're a disappointment. 
Moving to Railgar, which is actually a proper orange, kind of a slightly burnt orange, but orange nonetheless. And I took this through the socket and all over the lid. So my thinking with this palette was that I would create that pinky red look, aka look number one, and challenge myself to do a cool tone look, aka look number two, and then create an orange base look. And that's what I'm doing here. We're gonna start smoking out this look. There isn't a black in this palette, so I lined the upper lash line with a smudgy black pencil, and then really buffed out the edges with a small brush. This felt a little choppy to me. It felt unfinished. So I went over the black with red ochre, and I kind of hated how it looked, to be honest, but it all worked out in the end. With my heavy eyelids, or you might find this if you have more of a hooded eyelid shape, I always feel like I need some extra socket shading. And it's probably all in my mind, but I did take a little bit of that uh, red ochre in the outer socket, just for a little extra definition. For the lower lash line, I mixed a dark brown and a red to get a reddish brown and press that into the bed of the lashes. If you are seeking a genuine grunge look, then I suggest that you go much heavier on the lower lash line than I did here. Go ahead and buff it out with that orange shadow railgar to match the color combo that we got going on on top. And then given that this look leans warm, I highlighted the tear duct with the warmer shimmer, Primavera. House of Lashes Bambi Lashes. I don't think that these are available anymore and they look pretty standard in the box, but when I put them on the eye, they kind of looked like tree branches that went haywire. Am I right? They're so weird, but I kind of like it. I kind of like it. This evening I was actually going out to eat and ain't nobody got time for liquid lipstick when you're going out to eat. So instead I went with a bit of the Fenty Gloss Bomb, uh, which was a little bit too glossy and glam for this look, so I blotted it down and there you go. Bob's your uncle. If you enjoy the three looks one palette series, then please tell me in the comment section so I know whether or not to continue doing them. Um, they're quite labor heavy to create, uh, but I personally enjoy watching them and I enjoy creating them, so I hope you love them too. Definitely check out my previous three looks one palette video. I'm gonna link that on the screen. And if you like what I do, hit subscribe, why not? I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever it is that you're up to, and I shall speak to you all very soon. Bye. And I